President Volodymyr Zelensky and his visit to Washington yesterday, which seemed to fail to sway enough Republicans to deliver more aid for the fight against Russia. President Biden announced $200 million worth of pre-approved aid that will go toward Ukraine's war effort. But Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said yesterday it will be practically impossible to get a supplemental funding deal done before the Christmas holiday. During a news conference with Zelensky, President Biden called out Republicans for holding, out, holding up the aid package. This host of a Kremlin-run show said, well done, Republicans. That's good for us. That's a Russian speaking. If you're being celebrated by Russian propagandists, it might be time to rethink what you're doing. History, history will judge harshly those who turn their back on freedom's cause. All right, joining us now, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the White House, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Thanks for coming back this morning. Admiral, um, at the end of the day, uh, do you really think Republicans are going to stop the funding of, 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 of Ukraine's war effort against Putin? There's so many people we've heard from Chairman McCall. Mitch McConnell yeah. also has been a supporter on the Senate side. So many Republicans have actually supported this. Do you think we get there in the end? I think we will, Joe, yes. Uh, look, there's some tough negotiations still ahead here, but, uh, but the president's confident that there's enough bipartisan support in both chambers, the Speaker of the House as well, uh, to continue to support U Ukraine. Uh, they all realize what's at stake here. We've got a small number of Republicans in the House which absolutely won't support Ukraine just on the face of it, uh, but the negotiations right. but over, over the border will continue. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it, it seems that the White House is more than willing uh, to meet Republicans halfway or even more than halfway on, on border negotiations. Uh, but, but word out from the New York Times, unnamed Republicans saying they're going to push uh, the president to the wall. And even if he meets them halfway, they still may reject it for political purposes. What can you tell us about that? Well, I won't get into negotiating here in public. Those comments are deeply unfortunate. The president has said, and he continues to say, Joe, he's willing to sit down and negotiate in good faith uh, and, uh, and to explore both border security issues, but also border policy and immigration policy. He's willing to, to talk about all those things, uh, but obviously he wants that to proceed in, in good faith. And obviously, if, if it's a negotiation, I don't need to tell you this, that means compromise. That mm -hmm. means not everybody's going to get everything they want. The president understands that. He's willing to have that conversation. Uh, and we're, again, we're, we're pursuing those negotiations with that in mind. I want to move to Israel, Admiral. At this time yesterday, uh, some things have changed. President Biden has now said Netanyahu needs to change. Uh, we have been talking about the impossible to explain response time to October 7th and the support that Israel gave to have the uh, funding go straight to uh, Doha uh, uh, funding. Yeah, yeah, Doha funding to Hamas. Yeah. Uh, Hamas terrorists that they say want to kill Jews 24-7. It's a circle of questions that don't get answered, and it appears President Biden is asking for more. How does he want Netanyahu to change? Well, we, what we want to see is that the intent that the is Israelis have put forward, particularly with civilian casualties, is, ma is matched by results. And we know that they are definitely trying to be more precise and more targeted, but it doesn't always come out that way uh, on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. We are Obviously, we're going to make sure that they continue to have the weapons and the tools and the capabilities they need to go after uh, Hamas. Uh, but what the president really also wants our Israeli counterparts to start thinking about uh, and talking to us about is what's the day after in Gaza look like? Uh, how does governance look like? How do we meet the aspirations of the Palestinian people, the vast majority of which don't support Hamas and don't feel like Hamas represents them? Uh, so we gotta, we'll also work on the Palestinian Authority, making sure that they can be reformed and revitalized. Those are the sorts of changes I think the president's really trying to seek here. Admiral, good morning. The president is reported to have said in that donor meeting uh, that the bombing from Netanyahu from Israel has been, quote, indiscriminate. Israel would say it's precision bombing, that Hamas puts civilians between it and the bombs, that, in fact, Israel has uh, warns before it's going to bomb, gives safe zones to civilians and yeah. the rest of it. So do you believe that the bombing from Israel has been indiscriminate? 
Well, it's like I said before, and this is what the president was referring to, that uh, we know that they're, they have good intentions here, and they have made efforts, Willie, to be, to be clear. In the north, they went in with a much smaller force than originally planned so that they could be more precise on the ground. They have uh, published online maps uh, for people to know where, where they shouldn't go in, in South Gaza. That's basically a modern military telegraphing their punches. That's pretty extraordinary. But while the intention is there, and they have taken some actions, uh, again, some of the results are not uh, commensurate with that that effort to minimize civilian casualties, and we're going to continue to urge them uh, to be more careful, more precise going forward. Jake Sullivan, our national security advisor, is is in the region. He'll be having meetings uh, tomorrow, I believe, uh, in, in Tel Aviv, uh, all to that effect, to uh, to see what we can do to, to continue to help Israel fight this fight, but to do so in a way uh, that minimizes civilian casualties. Admiral, good morning. It's Jonathan. On the subject of military tactics put forth by uh, the IDF, they have tested out uh, a procedure that would flood the tunnels underneath sections of Gaza with seawater, an effort to chase out terrorists hiding there. Some have raised concerns, though, that that also could spell real trouble for any hostages who are being held there. What does the White House believe of this plan? Well, I won't speak to Israeli tactics specifically. They, they should speak to uh, the, the things they're doing tactically to try to go after Hamas and their ability to command and control. It's certainly no secret to anybody that there are hundreds of miles of, of tunnels and apparatus under the ground that they use for command and control, for restocking, restoring, for uh, uh, for uh, harboring uh, their, their fighters. And it's possible, in fact, we know that some of the hostages were kept, at least temporarily, uh, in some of these tunnels. I'll just say this, Jonathan. Uh, we know they're up against a determined foe who continues to use uh, human beings as shields, continues to hide under uh, under their infrastructure, uh, and that presents a, an added and a special burden for the Israeli military as they try to go after that leadership. And, and we'll do everything we can, again, to help them with the tools and capabilities, but also urge them as they pursue tactics against Hamas leaders that they do so in a way that protects civilian infrastructure as much as possible and minimizes any risk to, to innocent civilian life that might be uh, represented with ha Hamas leaders anywhere, whether it's underground or above ground. And that includes, of course, uh, the hostages we don't want to see, and they don't want to see any harm come to those people. Admiral, the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations has once again called for a ceasefire. I don't believe that the Secretary General of the United Nations has ever called for the International Red Cross to be able to treat the hostages that Hamas is holding. And I'm wondering, on the hostages and the International Red Cross, what kind of pressure is the administration putting on or trying to put on uh, Hamas and, and to get the hostages seen by the International Red Cross? We've, we've been trying to pursue this uh, very, very hard, Mike, and we have been putting a lot of pressure on uh, on Hamas through our interlocutors, of course, with them. We don't have direct communications with Hamas to allow the Red Cross to have access to these hostages. That was part of the original deal when we got the pause in place was that uh, that as we got hostages out, that the Red Cross would be able to get in to see the hostages that weren't going to be released. And that still hasn't happened yet. And, of course, that just opens up so many more questions for the families. I mean, the, the, having the Red Cross have access to them would tell us where they are, how they are, what kind of con conditions they're being held in. Uh, and it's worrisome to the extreme that Hamas won't allow the Red Cross that access uh, because well, they must be trying to hide something. So we're going to keep pushing for this uh, to get that access as much as possible. It's really important. And back to the issue of a ceasefire. Again, we don't support a general ceasefire at this time. Uh, that basically would leave Hamas in power in Gaza, basically validates what they did on the 7th of October, and of course gives them uh, a much larger uh, amount of time uh, to restock, restore themselves, and to, and to refit and plan and, and conduct additional attacks. National Security Council spokesman retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Thank you once again. Thank you, Admiral.